Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to this PowerPoint presentation. As you can see on the slide, the title for this study is Why We Must Read the Word of God Every Day. On the surface, this is a basic study, but we will be learning some very deep things. Be sure you have your Bible at your side, pause the video, and look up every verse that's presented for yourself. Okay, I'm going to start with a word of prayer, then we're going to continue on. Dear Father in Heaven, we thank you for this day, and we just want to thank you so much for all the blessings that you continue to bestow upon us. Please forgive us of our sins. And be with us now as we open up your word in this very important subject. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So God's word is a lamp and a light. Be sure you look these verses up in the Bible because you get more. We're counseled, actually science, not that we're counseled. Science tells us you get more from 20 times more from a printed page than you do from an electronic. So always be certain to look up these verses. Okay, let's continue on. Psalms 119, 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So simply by opening up the word of God, it gives light, it gives understanding unto the simple, that's the uneducated. I remember when I first started reading the Bible for myself in 1989 and I couldn't understand a lot of the words because of the hitherto's and the beholdest and so I purchased a dictionary, a Webster's Dictionary and I found myself in the dictionary more in the Bible and then when I had to look up a word there were words in the definitions that I didn't understand that I wound up looking up and so just from reading the Bible I went to the dictionary and started learning a lot of vocabulary words and you can be uneducated and when you start opening God's word, you can truly be educated. It truly gives light. Matthew 4.4 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So according to the Bible, we're not only to go by our physical food, but we are to pay attention to the word of God. So Jesus compares our physical food to our spiritual food. Job 23.12 How often should a person eat a day? According to Job 23.12 I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Well, how many times a day is it necessary to eat in order to get absolute nutrition? Well, the answer is two. Okay, how many times is it necessary to eat in a day in order to have good nutrition? The answer is two. We should eat at least two meals a day and at one meal have the fruit and the other meal have the vegetables. Never mix your fruit and vegetables together. But if you do this and have grains and other things included, you can get all the nutrition necessary. Well, according to Job, he esteemed the word of God more than his necessary food. So, what is more than two? That would be three. We must read the word of God three times a day. But the first reading it being the heaviest of the day. So, we're counseled from science and our books breakfast should be the most heartiest meal of the day so make your Bible reading the most heartiest in the morning and the second most heartiest in the afternoon 
and the shortest or smallest would be in the evening and if you are brand new you're not going to spend an hour two hours three hours in the Bible in the morning I mean some will but a good majority won't but just start off small and then build up each day question what happens to a person when they don't eat during the day or they skip a meal and they're not doing it for fasting they get irritable impatient not always kind grumpy cranky etc and the same thing happens if we don't eat our spiritual food we make it a point to eat every day but for some reason our Bibles collect dust during the week and we need to get in the habit of eating from the Word of God every day okay the same thing happens when we don't eat our spiritual food question why should we eat from the Word of God every day well there's several answers to this and we're going to look at them Psalms 119 verses 9 and 11 tells us well before we read that if you were a child or a child went to their parent and said mom I'm hungry you know I want breakfast and the mom says well I fed you yesterday would that be a suitable answer of course not the nutrition for from yesterday does not sustain for today what you physically ate yesterday does not sustain for today and the same goes with the Word of God we need to eat that phys spiritual food every day just as we eat the physical food so here's reasons why wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee so it's for cleansing our way and so that we don't sin against God John 3 3 tells us the following Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God brothers and sisters this is very very important if we're not spiritually born again we cannot see the kingdom of God so for those who have certain lifestyles that are contrary to God's Word and they say well I was born this way the Bible says we all need to be born again okay so if we're not spiritually born again we cannot see the kingdom of God so how does this happen how does one become born again being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever first Peter 1 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but by the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever so we're born again by the Word of God we're born again through the Word of God this is how we're born again now how often does this need to take place how often does this need to take place Paul tells us the following I die daily that's found in 1st Corinthians 15 31 so if we are to die daily dying to self um, carrying our cross daily then this means we have to be born again daily and the only way we can be born again daily on a daily basis is through reading the Word of God so we have to die daily and in order to die daily we must be born again daily and this can only happen through the reading of God's Word what else happens when we read the Word of God in Romans 10:17, we're told so then faith cometh by hearing 
and hearing by the Word of God. So reading the Word of God every day continues to increase our faith. I remember a story, well, this is a true situation that happened with me and a friend many years ago. She was not raised Christian. She wasn't really a believer. And then she started to come to the Lord. She was reading her Bible every day. And her faith was increasing more and more. And then about a year later, she had made a comment to me that she was losing faith. And she didn't know if she could trust in God anymore. So I asked her, when is the last time you read your Bible? And she said about three months ago. This is why she was losing her faith. Because she was reading the, she had stopped reading the very book that was going to help her have the faith that was necessary. Especially only being one who was reading on and off for a year. In John 15, 3, we're told ye are clean through the word. So, reading the word cleanses us. And according to the Bible, all of our righteousness is filthy rags. I believe that's in Isaiah 1, 16. Yes, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. So, Isaiah 1.16, we're filthy, and we're told we have putrefying so sores from our head to our feet. But the Word cleanses us. We're clean through the Word. In Psalms 107.20, we are told, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So, we're healed through the Word of God. And... I know of a story that a pastor told me many years ago that happened to himself regarding a relative. He had a relative who was dying of cancer in the hospital, and when he went to visit this relative, because he lived in another state, he asked the staff of the hospital to keep her television off at all times. And he started to read the Bible to her every day. And he would read it for hours. And in less than a week's time, I believe it was, she walked up out of that hospital cancer-free. Now, she did die a few years later, but it wasn't from the cancer. It was from the complications and side effects of the medication and chemotherapy drugs that she was taking for the cancer. But by reading the word, it healed her. And so if you have a loved one in the hospital, if you're working with the sick, please be sure to read the word of God to them. Have them get in some type of reading program where if it's just a few verses a day or a chapter in Proverbs a day or the book of Psalms or the book of John because it truly does heal people. In Revelation 19.13, we are told the following. And he, Jesus, was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. So Christ's name is the Word of God. In John 1.1, 1, 1, we're told in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. In verse 14 of John 1, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But some people will say, yes, but that doesn't say the word of God. It just says the word. Well, here we have a verse telling us that Christ, and if you read verse 11, you'll see this is referring to Christ. I put his name in parentheses. But his name is called the word of God. Now let's go on. Okay, in John 15, verses 4 through 7, we are told the following. Abide in me, remember Christ is the word, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, 
the same forth the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing so if we stay in the word and that doesn't mean all day long but if we read it in the morning in the afternoon in the evening and later we'll learn how much we should be reading a day it's not a lot and when you're brand new you just read a little bit a few verses and each day it'll increase more just like a child goes on to more food and more solids and so if we're not reading the Word of God every day we cannot bring forth this fruit we will not have the fruit of the Spirit and that's found in Galatians 5 22 and 23 the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness and temperance against such there is no law if we're not in the word every day we cannot bring forth this fruit and remember that tree will be cast down and here it says for without me ye can do nothing and in Philippians 4 13 we're told I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me but that's only if we're in the word brothers and sisters if we don't get that spiritual food we're going to be weak we're not going to be strong continuing on if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you when we read the Word of God that's hiding the word in our hearts and the word is Christ so when we read the word Christ is abiding in our hearts let's continue on the word teaches us about God's love for us friendships marriage parenting agriculture and gardening business dealings and business transactions how to sustain a home weather science disease true psychology how to maintain health how to prevent plagues how to decrease poverty true love how to deal with the possessed persons how to treat the poor and hungry what else does it teach us about how to be sociable courteousness cleanliness kindness gentleness sanitation how to reverse depression how we got here where the rainbow came from where different languages come from how to replace electrolytes the laws of health how to properly invest your money how to dress properly true recreation how to avoid wickedness and this is reading the word is the highest education a person could get you can find that in evangelism 456 paragraph 1 and the list goes on as to what the Word of God teaches and if you were to go to any bookstore like Barnes and Noble you would see so many books on these particular subjects but yet in the Bible the basic instruction that we need is found right in the Word of God the Bible is a progressive book the communication of intelligence grows with the opening of God's Word to the understanding I remember when I first started reading the Word of God in 1989 and I barely knew anything and I didn't know the words in the Bible and brothers and sisters it just took me maybe a year to really understand the words and understand what the Bible was saying if even that long and by God's grace praise the Lord 28 years later I mean I'm learning every day and we're gonna continue to learn and learn throughout eternity but read the Bible every day read it from front to back as a matter of fact in Isaiah 28 9 through 10 which is a verse I have not posted but you can go in your word and read this for yourself 
the way we're counseled to read is whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little Isaiah 28 9 and 10 so two ways to read the Bible from Genesis straight through to Revelation line upon line but also according to subject matter so if you're learning about the state of the dead or the Sabbath or health or medicine or sickness or you can take like a Cruden's concordance look up all the words on the Sabbath look up all the words on health sickness medicine do word searches and study that way look up die death uh, sleep there this is different ways you can also get um, study guides that are according to subject matter and then you can look up all the verses according to the subject matter and this is called proof texting one verse on top of another verse pertaining to the same subject let's continue on God designed the Bible to be a lesson book to all mankind in childhood youth and manhood and to be studied through all time the study of the scriptures is the means divinely ordained to bring men into closer connection with their Creator and to give them a clearer knowledge of his will it is the medium of communication between God and man great controversy page 69 paragraph 2 and that previous quote was 1888 materials page 259 paragraph 1 so the Word of God is the communication between God and man the way we communicate with the Lord is we pray and the way he communicates to us is through his word through providence through nature but specifically through his word now if you were in a marriage which we're supposed to be in a marriage with the Lord if you're in a marriage with someone your wife or your husband if they never spoke to you and you did all the talking that's a one-sided relationship that doesn't have good communication skills okay God wants to not only listen to our prayers but he also wants us to listen to him and the way we do that mainly is through the reading of his word continuing on this holy book is the guidebook to the inhabitants of a fallen world the Bible should be read every day and the previous quote was sons and daughters of God page 190 paragraph 2 it's to be the guidebook to the inhabitants of a fallen world and the word Bible is comes from the Latin word Biblia which means book it just means book and that's why they put Holy Bible Holy Book but Bible the word Bible we like to use an acronym called basic instructions before leaving earth and so this is God's guidebook to mankind he is our manufacturer he created us and every manufacturer has a owner's manual so if you were to buy a DVD uh, uh, a DVD player I should say or a television or um, an air conditioning system or a vehicle it would all have some type of manual telling you exactly how to properly take care of the product well the Bible is our instruction it is our owner's manual and it should be read every day that's found in testimonies volume 3 page 194 paragraph 1 the Bible is the great standard of right and wrong clearly defining sin and holiness in heavenly places page 133 paragraph 5 the Bible no other book can satisfy the questions of the mind or the cravings of the heart 
Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 53, paragraph 4. I remember when I first came in the truth, ever first step, uh, ever first step foot into a Seventh-day Adventist church. I remember I had tons of questions. I wanted to know, was it wrong to curse? Because I cursed a lot. And was it wrong to smoke? And was it wrong to drink alcohol? And was it wrong to go dancing at the clubs? Because these were all the things I did. And this was in my heart. And I was so excited to see that everything I wanted to know was found in the Word of God. And as I continued to grow more and more as a Christian, many questions as to why this happened and why this Lord and why the answer was there in the Bible. And so I just thank the Lord for that. Now it might not be an explicit answer, like extremely detailed, you know, like for example, someone's parent may have given them up for adoption you know but there's verses in there that all things work together for good and God knew you when you were in conception and um, he'll turn the evil into good so we have to look at it that whatever has befallen us the Lord has his good will and we have to trust and so this really is the only book that can satisfy the questions of the mind or the cravings of the heart and it will not nothing will satisfy that hole in everyone's heart like the word of God will um, you know amusements, drugs, alcohol none of that can replace the hole in the heart like the word of God can continuing on there are dangerous heresies that will be presented as Bible doctrines and we are to become acquainted with the Bible so that we may know how to meet them. Evangelism page 590 paragraph 2 How to study Well we learned Isaiah 28 9 and 10 but let's see what this says. There's nothing more calculated to strengthen the intellect than the study of the scriptures. No other book is so potent to elevate the thoughts, to give vigor to the faculties as the broad and nobling truths of the Bible. That was Steps to Christ, page 90, paragraph 1. But there is but little benefit derived from a hasty reading of the scriptures. One may read the whole Bible through and yet fail to see its beauty or comprehend its deep and hidden meaning. One passage studied until its significance is clear to the mind and its relation to the plan of salvation is evident is of more value than the perusal of many chapters with no definite purpose in view and no positive instruction gained. Keep your Bible with you. As you have opportunity, read it. Fix the text in your memory. Even while you are walking the streets, you may read a passage and meditate upon it, thus fixing it in the mind. Steps to Christ, page 90, paragraph 1 and 2. You know, as I read this, um, even while you were walking the streets, there was a picture, and you can go on Google and look it up, where there was all these people crossing a street, and they were all looking at their cell phone. And I remember something came up that an email was sent to me some time ago, if we treated the Bible like we treat our cell phones, we would see much wickedness in this world erased. We would see a lot of love. If we checked it every five minutes, if we searched it, if we did research, if we read it constantly as we were walking, sitting in doctor's offices, um, at someone's home, if we carried our Bible with us everywhere, like we do our cell phones and treated it, oh, what changes in people's lives we would see. And so, instead of searching your cell phone constantly, brothers and sisters, let's search our Bible. Let's fix our eyes upon a passage or two while we're standing in line at the stores or at the bank 
or we're waiting at the doctor's office, or why a friend or loved one is driving and we're in the passenger seat. Continuing on. We cannot obtain wisdom without earnest attention and prayerful study. Some portions of scripture are indeed too plain to be misunderstood, but there are others whose meaning does not lie on the surface to be seen at a glance. Scripture must be compared with scripture. There must be careful research and prayerful reflection, and such study will be richly repaid. As the miner discovers veins of precious metal concealed beneath the surface of the earth, so will he who perseveringly searches the word of God as for hid treasure finds truths of the greatest value which are concealed from the view of the careless seeker. And brothers and sisters, there are some scriptures that are very obvious, such as Eve ate the fruit and she disobeyed God. But there's other scriptures that are not so obvious, okay? And we need to compare scripture with scripture. That's proof texting. And we are to dig deep it's called a hidden treasure. I remember I heard a pastor one time say a couple years back that it's not necessary to dig deep in the Bible and I couldn't believe my own ears of what I was hearing. We are to dig deep brothers and sisters because everything is not very obvious. Everything doesn't lie on the surface. So we really need to be studying and this is what helped me is because when I first started reading the Bible in 1989, I never stopped. And I read and read and read and looked up and did word searches and used the concordance to look up words and see every verse of what it talks about. And by doing that and reading the Bible straight through, I learned a lot. Plus, I read a lot of Spirit of Prophecy books. So... This is how you can increase your knowledge and really learn. Continuing on, merely to hear or to read the word is not enough. He who desires to be profited by the scriptures must meditate upon the truth that has been presented to him. Christ Object Lessons, page 59, paragraph 5. When a real love for the Bible is awakened, and the student begins to realize how vast is the field and how precious its treasure, he will desire to seize upon every opportunity for acquainting himself with God's Word. Its study will be restricted to no special time or place. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 463, paragraph 1. How do you know if you have a real love for the Bible? When you find yourself wanting to constantly read it and look up and learn as much as you possibly can and you don't have a specific time, you'll do it when you're sitting in your car during lunch break. You'll do it when you're standing in line at the store or the bank. You'll do it when before you're going to bed. You will constantly find any time you can to research and read as much as you can. If you don't find yourself doing that, you don't have a love for the Bible as you should but that doesn't mean you can't you have not because you ask not just pray for a desire so that you will be willing to read the Bible every single day and look for the treasures that it holds continuing we cannot expect to gain spiritual knowledge without earnest toil those who desire to find the treasures of truth must dig for them as the miner digs for the treasure hidden in the earth. No half-hearted, indifferent work will avail. It is essential for old and young not only to read God's word, but to study it with wholehearted earnestness, praying and searching for truth as for hidden treasure. Those who do this will be rewarded, for Christ will quicken the understanding. Christ Object Lesson, page 111, paragraph 2. I can't tell you how true this is. I can't even express how truthful this is. And it's, not, it's essential for both young and old to read God's Word and study it with wholehearted earnestness, praying and searching for truth as for hidden treasure. 
I remember when I was brand new and I didn't know how to study or where to start. I would just pray, Lord, what do you want me to read today? And I would open up the Bible and I would read a chapter or read maybe the first ten verses and would be so surprised each time that it was pertaining to something I was going through at that particular moment or something that I needed to know. But God knew my heart. Then I decided to read from Genesis to Revelation. And then I decided to read according to subject. And I was doing every type of Bible study guide that I could do, whether it was the amazing facts study guides or voice of prophecy study guides or steps to life study guides some of these I don't know if are available anymore but I did all the study guides I possibly could to learn as much as I could and read um, Bible readings for the home as well great controversy patriarchs and prophets steps to Christ I was reading all that I could and all of those books that I mentioned they they go according to subject matter and bring all the verses together on that particular subject and so this is how we're counseled to study not just line upon line but here a little and there a little continuing on search oh search the precious bible with hungry hearts explore god's word as the miner explores the earth to find veins of gold Never give up the search until you have ascertained your relation to God and His will in regard to you. Christ Object Lessons, page 111, paragraph 3. Never should the Bible be studied without prayer. Before opening its pages, we should ask for the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, and it will be given. Steps to Christ, page 91, paragraph 1. Never should we study the Bible without prayer. Whenever you're about to open the pages, always ask for the Holy Spirit to give you enlightenment. Okay? And explore the Word of God as a miner is exploring the earth to find veins of gold. You think those people on treasure hunts, looking for a treasure chest back in like the 17 and 1800s, you think when they were looking for gold in California, they were haphazard about it? No, they were very earnest. They did whatever they did needed to do, and they didn't stop until they found what they were searching for. Well, the Bible is full of precious gems and treasures. Continuing on, let the student keep his Bible always with him. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 463, paragraph 1. We are never to leave our homes without our Bibles. You can have one in your nightstand for when you go to bed. You can have one in your desk drawer at work. And you can have one in your office so you don't have to carry the same one everywhere you go if that's not convenient for you. But always have a Bible wherever you go. Because you never know, you might come across someone who is going through something and they need to see the word they need to see the promises you might be going through something and you need that word and remember when we're in the car when we are in the office or at a bank or in the the, the line of a store we should be taking advantage to read a few verses continuing on Read your Bibles more. Testimonies, Volume 5, page 571, paragraph 1. What leisure time we have should be spent in searching the Bible. Early Writings, page 58, paragraph 1. That doesn't mean you can't have recreation time. Recreation time and leisure time are two different things. We're counseled to go out in nature ever so often, every so many couple of weeks, go by a lakeside, Go out in nature and let the mind rest. Leisure time is, okay, I have 15, 20 minutes left. Instead of jumping on Facebook or Instagram to post all these wonderful pictures, spend that time to read a few verses, unless you're doing some type of ministry work. But we get caught up in posting picture after picture after picture, and it takes a minute or two to post those pictures. Brothers and sisters, that's wasted time. That should be used not in vanity, but in studying God's Word. 
or reading a pioneer book or reading a spirit of prophecy book continuing on parents are to read to the children each day instead of recommending your children to read Robinson Crusoe or fascinating stories of real life such as Uncle Tom's Cabin open the scriptures to them and spend more time each day in reading and studying God's Word I see a lot of parents give their children books like uh, Little House on the Prairie and although it's good story books we want to give them the Bible instead or nature books we can give them where counseled or we can give them biographies of Christian men good Christian men but as far as reading Robinson Crusoe, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and these different Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn. These types of books should be used that time in reading the Word of God. Continuing on. In every family there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship. How appropriate it is for parents to gather their children about them before the fast is broken. That's before breakfast to thank the Heavenly Father for his protection during the night and to ask him for his help and guidance and watch care during the day. How fitting also when evening comes for parents and children to gather once more before him and thank him for the blessings of the day that is past. Testimonies, Volume 7, page 43, paragraph 1. Now when you have your morning and evening worship, it should be short. It shouldn't be long and tedious. Sing a song, say a prayer, or start off with the prayer. Sing a song or two, read a couple verses, maybe a page. Finish off with singing maybe another song if you want, or you can sing one in the beginning and one in the end. Make sure you start and end with prayer. And it's that simple and sweet, brothers and sisters. Listen to this quote. The father, or in his absence, the mother should conduct the worship, selecting a portion of scripture that is interesting and easily understood. The service should be short. When a long chapter is read and a long prayer offered, the service is made wearisome, and at its close a sense of relief is felt. God is dishonored when the hour of worship is made dry and irksome, when it is so tedious, so lacking in interest, that the children dread it. And I personally am guilty of this many years ago, until I had learned this quote. And I have been in other families where worship would be an hour, and the children would be so frustrated and fidgety, and it would be tedious, and some of it was hard to be understood. And brothers and sisters, let's let's make it simple for these children. A few verses about Noah's Ark. We could read about it was, you know, one pair of the unclean and seven pairs of the clean. We could read a few verses about the Tower of Babel and where the language came from, where the rainbow came from. We don't need to read the whole chapter. We can read a few verses. And as they get older, they'll have a longer tension span. But let's not make it weary. Let's make the hour of worship for our families, especially our children. Let's make them a beautiful time. God bless. One last thing to share with you. Here's a quote I forgot to share earlier. It says, It is impossible to estimate the good results of one hour or even half an hour each day devoted in a cheerful social manner to the Word of God. Make the Bible its own expositor, bringing together all that is said concerning a given subject at different times and under varied circumstances. Councils on Sabbath School Work, page 42, paragraph 2. So we should be spending a minimum of half an hour to one hour each day. Now that might be less for some who are just starting out but an hour a day is a good amount and if you could do a little more that would be even better okay next quote tells us or actually read Isaiah 28 9 through 10 that is the verse that I was quoting to earlier if you'd like this PowerPoint presentation emailed to you 
and or the Word document that goes along with it to pass out. Please send an email request to cbiblical at yahoo.com. That's the letter C for Christine, and then biblical, B-I-B-L-I-C-A-L, at yahoo.com. Lord bless everyone, and don't forget, we can never be born again if we aren't in the Word every day. Read your Bibles more. God bless.